Hey everyone, welcome back to Daily Devotions. Pastor Steve here, uh, walking with you in God's Word, Exodus chapter 25. We've just come out of God speaking to Moses. He's continuing to speak to Moses up on that mountain as he's up there for 40 days and 40 nights, engulfed by fire. Um, But yet within that presence of God, he is speaking to Moses certain things. He's talked to him about the Ten Commandments. He's given him that covenant uh, that is going to be for the people and with the people, with the blood spilled, forgiveness being had. And then as he walks forward here, um, he is going to bring a detailed view and a very, I would even say, laboriously detailed view of how the people are to worship God. What, What the presence of God with his people will look like in this place. And so as they get into this, very detailed way of furnishing and bringing about the tabernacle because God is going to tabernacle, meaning he's going to be in the presence of his people. He's going to dwell with them. They're going to build this space for God's presence with his people. Um, And then they're going to be able to actually worship in a certain manner that's going to look different than the nations around them. And so, yes, detailed, but with a purpose. And so Exodus chapter 25, this is how the tabernacle was to come and uh, how it was going to bring forth from the people the worship of God. So Exodus chapter 25, verse 1, it says, The Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites to bring me an offering. You are to receive the offering for me, from each man whose heart prompts him to give. Giving is always not a pull. It's uh, out of generosity. Uh, It is out of the heart. It isn't necessarily out of obligation. What prompts him, his heart prompts him to give. And these are the offerings you are to receive from them. Gold, silver, and bronze. Blue, purple, and scarlet yarn. And fine linen. Goat hair, ramskins dyed red, and hides of sea cows. You're saying sea cows. For us in Florida that are watching, we understand what sea cows are, or manatees, as we get to see that word. But this sea cow might not necessarily be the manatee we're speaking or knowing of in our present day, but it was very, they would call the sea cows, they were very prevalent in the Red Sea, native to the Red Sea. Acacia wood. Olive oil for the light, spices for the anointing oil and for the fragrant incense, and onyx stones and other gems to be mounted on the ephod and breastpiece. We'll get to that in these later chapters. Then have them make a sanctuary for me, and I will dwell among them. What a promise. Have them bring an offering, bring themselves, bring their sacrifice, and I will a promise, not a hope, not a question. I will dwell among them. Make this tabernacle and all its furnishing exactly like the pattern I will show you. First and foremost, verse 10, have them make a chest of acacia wood, two and a half cubits long. When we're going to be talking about cubits, cubits are about, as they would say, an arm length. So let me get this right on the, hit the camera from elbow to the end right here of a man and so that's about as it's pretty normal yes I have longer arms but it's it's pretty basic but it's talking about a foot and a half and so 1.5 feet is a cubit so two and a half cubits long a cubit and a half wide and a cubit and a half high overlay it with pure gold both inside and out and make a gold molding around it. Cast four gold rings for it, and fasten them to its four feet, with two rings on one side and two rings on the other. Then make poles of acacia wood, and overlay them with gold. Insert the poles into the rings on the sides of the chest to carry it. The poles are to remain on the rings of this ark. They are not to be removed. Then put in the ark of testimony, which I will give you. Ark of the Testimony. Right, the Ark of the Covenant. This is that 
piece of furniture, very ornate, as it says here, with gold overlay, that's going to reside in the most holy place. This is to remind them of the covenant, the Ark of the Covenant. What is the Ark of the Covenant? It says this, make an, uh, make an atonement cover of pure gold, two and a half cubits long and a cubit and a half wide, and make two cherubim out of hammered gold at the ends of the cover. Make one cherub on one end and the second cherub on the other. Make the cherubim of one piece with the cover at the two ends. The cherubim are to have their wings spread upward, overshadowing the cover with them. The cherubim are to face each other, looking toward the cover. Place the cover on top of the ark and put in the ark of the testimony, which I will give you. There, above the cover, between the two cherubim that are over the ark of the testimony, I will meet with you and give you all my commands. For the Israelites. Continues to go on. The table. Make a table of acacia wood. Two cubits long, a cubit wide, and a cubit and a half high. Overlay it with pure gold and make a gold molding around it. Also, make around it a rim a handbreadth wide and put a gold molding on the rim. Make four gold rings for the table and fasten them to the four corners where the four legs are. The rings are to, cl are, are to be close to the rim to hold the poles used in carrying the table. Make the poles of acacia wood, overlay them with gold, and carry the table with them. And make its plates and dishes of pure gold, as well as its pitchers and bowls for the pouring out of offerings. Put the bread of presence on this table to be before me at all times. Now, there is this talk forward of making these things, and then the bread of presence, and you're thinking, what is this bread of presence? The bread of presence is God's provision for his people, what they've been receiving in the wilderness over and over again, but it's not necessarily just the manna. It is this bread, this unleavened bread, and as it's going to have these 12 pieces, it's a reminder of God's provision for the 12 tribes of Israel. So as it has these 12 loaves, we're going to find out this more. It's really, as they're walking into this worship space, it's a reminder over and over again. They're going to have the bread of presence. They're going to have the lampstand. They're going to have uh, this, uh, this um, uh, altar of incense, the prayers going before God. We're going to detail this out more of what's the purpose of having these things in uh, the place of worship, the holy place, for a reminder of who God is, why we're coming to him in worship. And so he's laying this before the people. So here comes another one that's going to be in the most into the holy place. Make a lampstand of pure gold and hammer it out, base and shaft. Its flower-like cups, buds and blossom, blossoms shall be a one piece with it. Six branches are to extend from the sides of the lampstand, three on one side and three on the other. So if you can actually envision this, which... Some of us right here in Boca Raton definitely can. This is a menorah. Three sides, three, three sides, and one lampstand coming right up the middle. So seven lights. And as we get to see that, that is what we understand as our Jewish friends speak to as a menorah. Three cups shaped like almond flowers with buds and blossoms are to be on one branch. Three on the next branch, and the same for all six branches extending from the lampstand. And on the lampstand, there are to be four cups shaped like almond flowers with buds and blossoms. One bud shall be under the first pair of branches extending from the lampstand, a second bud under the second pair, and a third bud under the third pair. Six branches in all. The buds and branches shall all be of one piece with the lampstand hammered out of pure gold. Then make it seven lamps and set them up on it, so that they light the space in front of it. Its wick trimmers and trays are to be of pure gold. A talent of pure gold is to be used for the lampstand and all these accessories. See that you make them according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. So he's speaking to Moses on the mountain. He's, he's uh, making way and making the detail of the worship that the people are going to have with him. But it's also going to be a push forward. What's going to be on that table? The bread of presence. And Jesus picks that up and says, I am the bread of life. The seven lights that are going to be there, it's just a prophecy fulfilled from Isaiah chapter 11, as we're going to see in that prophecy, 
of the seven spirits of God. And the seven ways that Jesus speaks about the presence of God with his people. I am the gate. I am the good shepherd. I am. There's seven of those. That's what we get to see. You see, the detail of God and the worship of God is always tied throughout his prophecies, throughout his law given here, but also to be fulfilled by Jesus. And so as we walk forth in the furnishing of this tabernacle and the presence of God with his people in this tabernacle, it's a foreshadowing to come to see that God will tabernacle with his people. John chapter 1. And the word of God dwelt with his people. Jesus tabernacled with us for the benefit of being able to once again bring back the pure and spirit-led worship of God from his people. Wait for it. We'll get more detailed as we go forth. But let's worship God this day as we are blessed by God with his presence in his Son and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Blessings on your day as God continues to walk with you.